on the Marco Ultra slit lamps that would be G2, G4, G5 Ultra. The bases are similar on those three types. But there's some issues here that I'm just going to run through to uh, remind myself and to let you in on some things about them. The uh, button is going to be the override switch. This is your rheostat. And this is your lock. If you're If you were to take your your knob lock knob off and look straight down, if you can see the axle, then the band on the axle lock has moved from being there to there. That, that happens often where this band that's inside this lock that's right here will, will turn and and then when you and then when you screw the your lock knob down your if the band if the band has slipped to the center then you're just screwing it right onto the axle. So you, you're going to need to get in there to turn that band. Differently so that it will hit the band. But that's the lock and I'll show you that a little bit later. This is the uh, rheostat or potentiometer. And it only has a certain amount of travel. It only has that much travel. And this is the knob that fits into here, this little half moon. However, the rheostat has more room than just the half. It can go past it or it can go above it. Your limits can, can change. So if you want to adjust your rheostat so it's brighter then you would take your knob off and turn it up a little bit and then put your knob back on so that so that your your span reflects what you want if you want it to be to be uh, dimmer then you would turn it down after you take your knob off, put it in, and then it would only go up so half, halfway. So this little rheostat, there's more, there's uh, more room to go brighter or dimmer, depending on where you set it and where you set your your knob. See that little uh, raised part on the bottom of the knob that fits inside here. So that's just something else that might be important. The base, you need to take everything off. You need hex screw or Allen wrench. 2.5 millimeter. Then you will need snap ring pliers to take off this snap ring. Take your bushing off. Take this off. You take your microscope arm off. And that leaves you with the base. Now, sometimes with the Marco, this center 
Phillips screw gets loose and your your base is, is loose, it will move forward and backward and all over, so make sure that's tight with your Phillips. Right in here, you have two Allens. And those Allen screws are holding down a lock washer right here. That wash, lock washer looks like this. And sometimes it gets stretched from use. So you would want to, you might need to squeeze that gap a little bit so that it fits tight on your shaft. It needs to fit tight on there to minimize the movement. You have two, two screw holes and uh, they line up with your talons. If you're going to be taking the base apart, you're going to need to take this handle off and the, way to, the only way that I have found to do it, small crescent. And underneath here, you'll see little straight edges right on the sides. And that's where you're going to fit your crescent wrench. You're going to fit your crescent wrench right on those. And that's going to hold it, hold the bottom while you unscrew, unscrew the handle. You're putting your pliers on, you might want to put something down to protect the paint. There's just enough room to get a small crescent wrench in there. And then you would turn it. This is holding it still, and then you would unscrew it. Now the button can come off easily, on and off easily. And when you're putting it back on, you would need to put your crescent wrench again back on it and screw it down. Screw it down tight. In case you don't know how to get these, in case you don't know how to get the rail covers off, little pins right here, you push down on them with a screwdriver and then they can slide away. So you would push down. And then and pull away. Now, since you're going to be taking the base apart, uh, you can take your axle out right now, too. You can take your axle out. So underneath here, you've got three Allens. These are four millimeter, but you're going to have to take off this plate, your, your switch, where your button on your joystick operates this switch, which is an override when it's on B. It's an override for the base. When it's on T, I think that has to do with the tower if you have some kind of photo attachment on it. But normally it's just going to be on B for base to override your light to get the brightest light when you want it. So you would take this plate off, these two little Phillips. Now, you 
going to need to loosen these two screws to pull your actuation ca cable out of that. See there's a little switch right there. And pressing the button activates that override switch. Can you see it? So when you put it back on, you want to put it where it just barely touches where it just barely touches the switch so that with a little bit of effort it engages the switch. So uh, you can adjust it by loosening and then pushing it forward or backward so that the at its resting position it's just barely touching the switch. Alright, just loosen it and then it'll come right on out. Now, before we take this off, we're going to want to loosen this Allen in here. This is like the, the safety stop. Once you've taken this little washer and 2.5 millimeter screw off. Then we can go ahead and take our half moon washer off so that we can continue on in taking off our base. Once we've taken that off, something you might want to do is get some kind of protective. I just wrapped a, a plastic trash bag in a circle and I've enclosed, wrapped it around the base because sometimes it can come on out because of the spring. So I do that as a protection. Then you have you have three Allens in here, four millimeter. You would take those out. Now out here at the base, you have a smaller screw right here. And Underneath that, there's a small washer. It's this little washer. It's going to go right there. It's a little spacer washer. That's very important for the alignment. So make sure that washer is in there. It's a very thin brass washer. But that's got to be in there when you put it back together. When it comes time to putting it back on. One way I've learned to put that little washer in is to put some kind of little stick, put my washer in there so that it, it stays in place. I line up the, that little stick to make sure I get that right. A little stick is still in place, so I know my washer's still in there. And then I put my bolt back in. That's when I'm putting it back together. Now this bolt is shorter than than these two bolts, but they're fo both four millimeter. But this is the shorter one. But that little washer is important. See right there, it, st it stayed on there. It's right there. Sometimes they stay on, sometimes they don't, but that needs to be there. Okay, now that you've got this apart, you can put this to the side. And now you can work on this area. 
and if your joystick has been sluggish it's probably because this is the, the grease inside these threads has gotten has gone has gotten old and bad. You need to clean all that old grease off. And sometimes this grease is so caked in there and old that it is not that easy to get off. I soak it. You can soak it in something like this, something that will break down that grease. You might need to get a little brush while you're soaking it to clean those threads. Since you've taken that washer off, you can unscrew this and clean clean it with the brush. And then re when you re-lube it, you want to use some very thin grease. I'm using a hog strike number 10 and that's a very thin grease and I use it on that and on the shaft and you want to clean you want to clean inside here too where your shaft is going to be moving clean that and relube that with with a thin grease like number 10 that will slow down that will make your joystick sluggish also that that and these threads so you would want to clean the threads inside here that you're screwing into. And that you might want to, if these are moving, are they stiff to turn? It could be that your bearings, either the bearings here or the bearings in here, need a little bit of lubrication. So, if you don't know which one it is, because they're, they're both connected, you've got three, you've got access holes, three access holes, to take this gear out to expose the, the bearings, and then you can isolate which one is the most sluggish. So, we'll take those out with three those three Phillips screws out with a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, I've taken out all three screws. This should come on out. Now here's the bearings. If they if they don't move very freely, then you need a little bit of lubricant. I like to put a little dab of 336 in here. Or you can put a little dab of WD-40, if that's all you have, to free these bearings up. But not too much because if they're too, if they're too um, free, then they're going to be noisy. And if they're noisy when you when you turn them, then you're going to have to put some more grease back in there to quiet them up. So it's a little delicate. It's a delicate balance of grease and lubricant to make your bearings turn and also to be quiet. Then you can check this. Make sure this is free too. And if not, you can also access these by uh, you would have to take your plate off and then you would you could access 
this, these bearings, there's also three Phillips here. But usually it's not this. Usually it's either these bearings, but this is normally the biggest thing that's that's making it sluggish is your grease in here has gotten old. See the, the threads are so thin and so um, little grease in there that gets old it, it makes it hard to turn. So after you've re-lubed that with some grease and a little lubricant if you need Regrease re this shaft. Put your safety stop, your safety stop washer back on. Put it back in.